Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In a previous episode, we discussed local companies using trade cards to advertise in the 1800s. The trade card was an early example of the modern business card. Many local businesses also advertised in the Rochester City Directory. The city directories from the 19th century are a wealth of information. This episode, we'll look at some of the businesses that advertised in the 1899 Rochester City Directory. This advertising reflects late 19th century products and businesses. Bradford Inn, located in Gonnick. They are advertising. They have electricity and steam heat. The inn had 63 rooms and had regular boarders, as well as guests staying for a few days. Here is a picture of the Bradford Inn. The S.T. Sinclair store sold boots, shoes, tinwares, newspapers, and other items. The store was located in the Blaisdell Block in East Rochester. Any growing city needs lumber. Here is the Geo Richards Manufacturers of Finished Lumber. The building was located east of the downtown railroad station. The Rochester Lumber Company, dealers in eastern and western lumber, also located near the downtown train station. Here are the hardworking employees of the Rochester Lumber Company. The Glendon House in East Rochester has been mentioned before in previous episodes. It was the grandest hotel in East Rochester. Unlike the Bradford Inn, they did not advertise electricity or modern conveniences. The Glendon House promoted the fact that they were just a three-minute walk from the East Rochester train station. This page has several businesses, a carpenter, a wholesale seller of seafood, and Worcester, Gaffney, and Snow attorneys. If the Gaffney name sounds familiar to you, that is because it refers to Mr. Charles Gaffney. He built the beautiful Gaffney home in Rochester in the 1890s. Even though Charles passed away in 1898, his name was still used in this 1899 ad. J.G. Morrill and Company Grocers were located on Main Street and it opened in 1874. The grocery store was well stocked and very popular. Here are a couple of old pictures of the Morrill Grocery Store. There are several businesses on this page, but let's concentrate on E.F. Smith manufacturers of handles for axes and picks. The E.F. Smith refers to Captain Elias Smith, who owned the axe and pick handle factory on the axe handle brook. Their handles were high quality and shipped all over the country. Captain Smith lived in this house, which was located on the road to Gonic. The old Morrill and Greenfield Company sold wood, hay, and ice. They also sold a lot of coal. Their coal shed survived into the 1960s, and here is a picture of it. Looking down Columbus Avenue from Portland Street, you can see the Morrill coal shed with a tall triangular roof. Here is another picture of the coal shed. Among the items sold by Frank Ferber were bicycles, and he sold a lot of them. In 1899, Rochester had a bicycle club, and it was one of the most popular clubs in the city. They had a large membership, and they would have group rides all over New Hampshire. All these bikes needed repairing at one time or another. J. H. Duntley's business on Union Street stayed busy repairing bicycles. Hanson Street Stable, conveniently located near the train station. A visitor arriving by train could easily rent a horse from them. Back then, Hanson Street was a busy place, filled with lots of shops and businesses. Among the many items sold by the Barry Shorey store was blacksmith supplies and whips. Horses were the major mode of transportation in the 19th century, and a blacksmith was essential for any town or city. On Silver Street, the Charles W. Bradley Company sold lime, hair, cement, and coal. Hair is an unusual item to sell nowadays. Back then, horse hair was used for home insulation and also added to plaster to make it strong. Madame Josephine is advertising modish millinery. 
This refers to fancy, large women's hats that were popular in the late 1800s. These hats soared above the head and were a fashion accessory and not a necessity. On the bottom of this page, the city hotel is advertised. This building was built in 1799 by Samuel Stora. In 1867, Jeremiah Woodman purchased the property and turned it into a hotel named the Mansion House. Located at 47 South Main Street, it has had several name changes, including the City Hotel. In 1964, it was known as the Hotel Hampshire when it was closed and torn down. Howe's Pharmacy, located on the Barker Block, dealer in all goods pertaining to the business. The Barker Block is on the corner of South Main and Portland Street. It was built by Charles Barker around 1889. For 10 cents, you could purchase a quick and effectual corn remover at the Feynman Brothers store. The store sold a lot of items. Here is a picture of the exterior of the store. Here is the interior, showing a fully stocked store. The Rochester Fancy Bakery. Among the items they sold were bread, cake, and pastry. The bakery was located in the Wentworth block. Ezekiel Wentworth built a new brick block aptly named the Wentworth block in 1882. Here is an old picture of the building. You can see a bakery sign on the right. In the middle of this page is the C.A. Davis Company. Buy candy and ice cream for C.A. Davis. In the late 1870s, Edward Davis and his son Charles started a candy factory in Rochester named C.A. Davis and Company. Later, it also sold ice cream in addition to candy. The company stayed in business until World War II. Here is a picture of the factory. I don't know what's up with this second picture. These C.A. Davis guys look threatening. One of them is holding what appears to be a lead pipe. Maybe they were just goofing around, trying to look tough. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.